Well, Sony has officially done it. They have killed E3 2020. At least that's what the media wants you to believe. Now, I don't think that E3 is dead by any stretch of the imagination. And if you're not familiar with that, please allow me to enlighten you. Today, Sony announced that they would not be participating in E3 2020, saying instead that they are gonna be focusing on their own special events throughout the year. They use the word hundreds. I think I know what that means. I'll get to that in a minute on this video. But they also went on to say that they felt the venue was great, but it didn't match their messaging and they felt it wasn't necessarily the best place for them to share their news and their vision for the PlayStation 5 platform. I'm a little upset by this because I really do like E3. And if you know anything about me, you know that E3 is my holiday. Some people say it's Christmas. Some people, for them, it's 4th of July or Thanksgiving. For me, E3 has always been my holiday, ever since the ripe old age of 21 years old when I had my first professional job. I remember fondly using my very first hours of annual leave to go home and watch press conferences for E3. And that has been a tradition that has carried with me to this day, and I will always do it until I die, or E3 dies, which may be sooner than later. We'll have to kind of wait and see how this all plays out. I did get to go to E3, fortunately, twice, both via Xbox Fan Fest, and I can say that definitely last year's was significantly less crowded, and there was definitely a lot less hype than the year prior. I don't think that had anything to do with the fans being invited. I think it didn't have necessarily anything to do with both Sony and Microsoft pulling out. I think it really had more to do with the other third party vendors not really bringing their A game. There is definitely something to be said about a great exhibit. And look no further than Halo Fan Fest on that, which to me was a very half-assed attempt to bring fans together. And trust me, I'm a gossiper. I will be able to talk and interact and mingle and make anything into a decent event. But that shouldn't be my job as a fan. My job as a fan should be to come and have my jaw dropped and my mind blown by all the great uh, wares and vendor uh, tents and experiences that vendors bring on their own to hype their own product. That definitely did not happen. Now, was that a catalyst of Microsoft and Sony beginning to branch off and do their own thing? Possibly. I'm not mentioning EA because I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, but I mean, I guess you can include them in this as well. Um, but really, uh, you look at it and it's not our job. It's not the fan's job to make this happen. It's the industry's job to make this happen. And the times they are changing. Uh, look no further than Amazon or Walmart or other stores that have shifted their tried but true model over the years. And it's time for E3 to grow up as well and to figure out what it wants to be. So going back to Sony, why does that make me so sad? Well, I've always been a Sony pony at heart. I love the console. It's very near and dear to my heart. I enjoyed the few years that they had the experience in the movie theater because even though I wasn't allowed to go to the actual theater and watch Sean Layton or Jack uh, Trenton or whoever it happened to be at the time show up on stage and unveil the new products, um, I was still with a group of people that were super fans and we all cheered and hooted and hollered at the screen together and that was good enough for me because that's really all that I had. If that experience is taken away from me, which it very well may be, I still have myself. I don't necessarily need other people to get hyped on my behalf. I do that on my own all the time. Uh, but there is still a part of me that's sad because E3 is a special thing. It's always been my special thing. And it's sad to see it slowly whittling away and morphing. It doesn't mean it's gonna be gone entirely. It just means it's gonna change. And we're gonna have to see what that means. Now, specifically for Sony and these hundred of, hundreds of events that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's interesting to me that Sony uses that word. And it only really indicates to me that they'll probably be doing something along the lines of what Nintendo has done in years past. And they'll be partnering with local retailers to provide small, intimate experiences for you to check out their products. If you remember a couple of years ago, actually more than a couple of years ago, it's five years ago, when the uh, PlayStation 4 launched, they uh, unveiled this thing they called the Road to Greatness. If you remember the launch slogan for the PlayStation 4 was Greatness Awaits. And the Road to Greatness was a giant semi-truck filled with PlayStation 4s and PlayStation VRs and whatever other uh, merchandise that they had at the time. And they drove around the United States of America, setting up at different cities across the, city, uh, across the nation 
and they invite their fans to come out and play their console and check out the games and talk with you know developers and kind of these mini E3 more grassrooty type events. Nothing of the big pomp and circumstance that I was uh, had seen before during E3. So I do miss that Sony won't be doing that stuff, but let's face it, there's only a very, very small percentage of us that will ever actually attend an E3. Not just because it's expensive to buy a ticket. Logistically, it doesn't make sense for us who live on the East Coast to fly all the way out there unless you're nuts like me. Uh, you're gonna spend a lot of money, and I don't know if a lot of people wanna spend their family vacation on going to see a video game press conference. I'm extremely fortunate that my wife is also an enabler because I'm an addict and that's something that I like to do. We do it often, but I understand that we are in a minority here. Not a lot of people get to do that. So from a day-to-day -day thing, is it gonna really impact a common fan? Probably not. Because the reality is you're gonna get your news in the same places you do now, whether it be from social media like Twitter or Instagram or YouTube or from uh, conventional you know, journalism, you're gonna be able to read it in various magazines and blogs, my channel, any of these places are gonna be talking about it, as well as Sony probably broadcasting directly on their own to the fan with their, um, you know, like a PlayStation type direct, kind of like what they've been doing now with State of Play. And you're still gonna get the information. You're still gonna get hyped up for the games you're gonna like. You're still gonna boo for the games you don't like. You don't need a live fan, re uh, fan there to, uh, and react for you, for you to watch and emulate that. You don't need to be watching a theater full of people reacting for you to react on your own. So in that sense, does it really matter? Hmm, maybe not so much. And if Sony does decide to bring it down to a more intimate level, there's a lot better chance that you, the fan, are gonna get to experience this stuff firsthand. And the reality is a lot of people, myself included, are really starting to get turned off by journalism and are really starting to see that there's a lot of hidden agendas and there's a lot, and not so hidden agendas, by the way. And there's also a lot of ulterior motives that journalism's, journalism has based a lot on who pays their bills to promote certain things and to talk fondly and negatively about things. And it's becoming transparent that journalism isn't uh, you know, this pure true source. And you, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you have your favorite YouTube people that you like to follow and the favorite people you like to follow on social media and you trust their opinion over others and you, become, you build a rapport with these people, even if you don't really know them personally, but you trust what they say and their values and their game experiences somewhat align with your own and you begin to make your own decision that way. Well, that's the same of uh, conventions as well. I was there at Microsoft's convention last year. I was there at E3. I was uh, seven rows from the front. Phil Spencer was about that big to me, but I did get to see him. And when he came on stage, that environment was electric. And the amount of games that they showed was electric. And then I read about it later in uh, YouTube and I saw what social media was saying and a lot of what the journalism's, uh, journalists were saying. And you know what? They shit all over it. And I, that's not my experience. So where was that disconnect and why? Well, we could talk about that in other videos, but the point remains that I had a different experience than everyone else. And maybe because I was there and by PlayStation, maybe seeing that and understanding that by connecting with the fans, they can build that relationship. Maybe this is a good move for them. We'll have to wait and see. It's still too early to tell. I think the hardware is gonna sell itself via the game, something that I've talked about for a very, very long time. At the end of the day, people aren't gonna care about teraflops and terabits and solid state drives and all that crap. What they're gonna care about is experiences and they're gonna care about the games. And as long as Sony can deliver on that, I don't care if they hold their press conference in a hotel at a Holiday Inn down the street and it's a grainy video. I don't care if they rent out their own theater and they invite people to participate and they have their own E3 or they do it at PSX or whatever they decide to do. If the message is strong and the uh, intent is pure and they decide to put gamers first, which they have always done. And to their credit, Microsoft has done that, particularly after Don Matrick left. Uh, putting gamers first, not necessarily all those other things that the Xbox One originally tried to be. And, you know, putting games first and gamers first, I think Sony can succeed anywhere. And I think for that matter, so can Nintendo and so can PlayStation and so can, uh, I'm sorry, and so can Microsoft. Um, this is very similar to what happened with the, um, when Nintendo went to the Nintendo Direct. A lot of people said, Nintendo's not having a stage they're not going to be there at E3. So, you know, Miyamoto is not going to come running out with a, a plastic sword and pretend to be Link. This is obviously going to fail. Well, look at the success of the Nintendo Switch. Look at all these Amiibos behind me and tell me that you don't have super fans that are chomping at the bit for everything that Nintendo is selling. 
And um, so it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a stage show anymore. I am ultimately sad though in closing that I do think E3 is changing a lot and they're gonna have to take a hard look at what they wanna be. Um, I'll do videos on this later on, you know, in the future, discussing what I think E3 needs to be and where it needs to get there and how it needs to get there rather. Um, but until then, that's not my problem as a fan. My problem as a fan should be no problem. I should be entertained and excited and hyped up with whatever tidbit of news I get, whether it comes from State of Play, whether it comes from Nintendo Direct, whether it comes from Phil Spencer's mouth, live on stage with pyrotechnics behind him. Because the reality is that is what really needs to sell games is that passion and that conviction to the gamer. And as long as Sony does that, I don't care where it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it informative. This is just my opinion on it. I'd love to hear yours. So leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.